women serving as president in the district 6,600 in 1992 and 93. Since 1998, Mary has been a proud member of the Rotary Club of Oberlin and served as president in 2014 and 15. She has many years of perfect attendance in both Avon Lake, now known as North Coast, and in Oberlin. Mary has several roles at the district level, including district vocational service chair, district governor nominee committee member, district club service chair, assistant governor, district group study exchange chair, district student counselor for youth exchange, and district alumni chair. Mary also supports MESA and enjoys working with others on international service projects. Mary was instrumental in grant writing and coordinating projects with other Rotary districts to fund Borehole Well in Zimbabwe, Africa in 2014 and 15 and a milk parlor project in 2017 and 18. In addition, Mary has supported Trees That Feed and Little Dresses for Africa made by Interact Club students, United Methodist Women's Groups, fellow Rotarians, and senior citizens supporting Rotary Without Borders. Mary is passionate about youth programs and has served for over a decade as a youth exchange officer for her home club coordinating both short and long-term exchanges and strive as a co-chair in the Fireland School District. Mary has completed the Rotary Leadership Institute modules one and two attended numerous district assemblies and district conferences where she has served as a facilitator and presenter over the years. She has attended mo multiple Rotary International Conventions and is a proud Paul Harris major donor. Outside of Rotary, Mary supports numerous community associations including Oberlin Community Services, Oberlin Business Partnership, and the Oberlin Heritage Center. She is active at the First United Methodist Church of Oberlin, having served as council at large, lay member in charge of the conferences, administrative council, finance committee chair, staff parish relations committee, and the membership committee. Mary is a strong voice for women, equality, and inclusiveness being recognized by the YWCA Illyria as a women, woman of achievement in 2016. Mary has a uh, diverse professional background beginning in the banking industry from which she has retired after having been associated with two banks in the Pittsburgh market and the Lorain County Bank. She also worked in the fashion industry and as a substitute teacher, a licensure she continues to hold in Ohio. Mary holds an associate's degree in fashion from the Wheeler School, a bachelor's of arts in management from Seton Hill University, and a master's in business administration from Tiffin University. She and her husband, Gary, a charter member of District 6600 Ohio Pathways E-Club, enjoy spending time traveling abroad and dining out. They also enjoy spending time with their three adult children and three grandsons often sharing Rotary experiences with them. She ends with a quote by Anne Lamont, don't look at your feet to see if you are doing it right, just dance. <clears throat> Please help me welcome Mary uh, with a room, warm Rotary um, welcome. <laughs> So again, can somebody give me a nod? Is everybody able to hear okay? Yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. So, um, if anybody has to get up and leave, no harm, no file, because my husband tells me I can toss the wallpaper off the wall once I get started. And most district governors can be pretty windy as they're very excited about the Rotary year. So I'm very excited to have this opportunity to serve as your district governor. It's truly an honor and privilege and I bring to you greetings from our international president, uh, Shaker Mesa, his lovely wife, Rashi, and our, our director, Elizabeth Yersovich, uh, and we're part of the Zone 30 and 31. So we're very excited about this Rotary Year. This is a year 
where we reintroduce ourselves, where we refresh our ideas, where we get creative, where we get bold. Because we've been away from each other and away from our Rotary's traditional footprint for quite some time. So as Shannon shared with you, I've been a Rotarian for 33 years. I'm one of the first women in Northwestern Ohio. And um, it was a very interesting time in 1980. In 1988, when I was inducted into Rotary at the um, pushing in the right direction, if you will, from the bank president, my boss, Bob Bowman, who wore a bow tie to work every single day and wore his Rotary pin every single day, said everyone on his management team needed to be involved with the service club. Because it's a magical thing about service. When you think about service about self, when you think about helping other people, your problems seem small, and good things come back to you just because you are compassionate and care about someone else. And I thought, oh my goodness, just one more thing. I'm so busy with, with raising a young family and helping to build this A1 Lake community brick and mortar and, and to add one more thing. But it's one of the best things that I ever, I ever got involved with. So, I got invited to the A1A Fun Lake Rotary Club, and we used to meet at this place called the Off Marine Resort. There was a golf course out back, a bowling alley, an indoor swimming pool that had great concerts on the weekend, a nice dining room with linens, and um, my club members used to meet at the bar starting at 11.30, and all the business owners would meet at 11.30 and start to drink martinis in Manhattan. When you own your own business, you're allowed to do what you want back in 1988. Mind how things have changed. We don't drink starting at 11.30 and then report back to work. But I only ever ate the olives and the cherries out of their glasses. I didn't drink and then go back to work. But we got kind of colorful with uh, the jokes and what we were doing. And um, the day I was inducted, two people quit. They said, if she's in, I'm out. So a level of discrimination 33 years ago and back then in 1988, you know, we had this thing called the superwoman syndrome. You had to be educated and involved with committees and have a business. And, and we were just burning the candle at both ends in, in trying to please. Well, now we do things a little bit more differently. And now we're on more of an equal playing field. So um, I went through the chairs. And we used to call going through the chairs to get to be a club president. It was such an honor and a privilege to be invited to Rotary. I still perceive my Rotary membership to be a gift, and it's my choice to continue in an organization whose values fit my values. And um, when I went through those chairs, there was a gentleman by the name of Lon Russell who was a charter member of the club, and he said, one day, Mary, you'll be our first woman president. So um, between Bob Bowman and Vaughn Russell, kind of laying a foundation, taking me under their wing, helping me nurture my, my Rotary membership and my Rotary understanding, I will be forever grateful. These gentlemen are no longer with us. They've passed recently, so I keep them in my heart. But they were really guiding forces um, in my Rotary relationship. So Andy Anderson was the district governor in 1992-93 when I was president for the first time. And I went through all Ohio Pets training, and it came time for the district conference. And um, my boss, Bob Bowman, was in the audience at the district conference. And uh, Andy Anderson called me up to the podium. And I'm thinking, oh my goodness, what did I do wrong? Well, when Andy visited the club, like I'm visiting you today, he said he was going to make the recommendation to Rotary International to pull the charter of the club. Now, you remember we had those strict attendance policies, you missed three meetings, and your membership was in jeopardy. It was because my club wasn't working with what was then the four avenues of service and projects aggressively. We were a social club. We were partying and having fun. And part of Rotary is having fun. But Andy said that he was so impressed with the fact that I did everything that I could to get the club back in line. So he had recognized the club as the most improved club in the district, um, the best newsletter for a small club, and the presidential citation of achievement. So my boss being in the audience heard that. So when I got back to work on Monday morning, we used to have what was called inner office mail running, the carriers would run from branch to branch. There was a handwritten note from the bank president complimenting my work as a Rotarian, representing myself, representing the community, representing the bank. And um, there was a box of chocolates too because I really have a sweet tooth. But that gave me the encouragement a long time ago to work myself up to where, where I am today in Rotary. 
And then I would be remiss if I didn't mention another gentleman. Maybe you all remember John Brodbeck as a district governor from the uh, Swanton area. And John was, a, was after Andy and invited me to work at the district level and learn so much about all the different components of Rotary, as Shannon had shared with you, that I've had the opportunity to, to experience. And we just lost John a year ago. Uh, he and Mary Lee had moved to Arkansas to be with um, their daughters. But, but he died suddenly, and, and the last time I was with John and Mary Lee was when I was in my training to become a governor uh, two years ago, face to face in Fort Wayne. And I said, John and Mary Lee, will you be at my district conference in May of, of 2022? And he said, if I'm alive, Mary, we wouldn't miss it. And we lost John, and the only way I could do John's funeral was, was on a Zoom call. So that's just a little bit of the backstory, and you know, Rotary is about friendship. Rotary is about family. And I know that everyone in Hicksville is very close to, to one another. And you are missing people and you have lost people. But the ones that you're missing, that you're not seeing face to face, it's so important right now to pick up the phone and say, hey, can you, can you come out today? I'll drive you to the Rotary meeting. Or you know what, can we meet for a cup of coffee or a beer or a glass of wine? I really want to see, see you and see how you're doing. That personal connection right now is, is more critical than ever because of the things that we've experienced. And I'm part of a class of district governors who have been trained virtually. I never had the privilege of meeting the international president, Shaker, and his wife other than a computer screen. We were to be together in Hawaii. We were to be together in Oklahoma. We were to be together in Taipei. We were to be together in Chattanooga. So that's four times that I've missed that one-on-one, -on -one, but my one-on-one -on -one has been a computer screen. And I'm thankful for that because we still have made a very strong connection. So I know since March of 2020, we found ourselves in a situation called the COVID crisis. And many of us have lost family and friends and family members, but we've had to adapt in order to survive. And that's what Rotarians do. We adapt, we change, we pivot, we're people of action. So think about that in your rotary role. And I know right now, now is not a time for me to judge someone or to be critical. Now is the time for me to have a heartfelt conversation. And that's what this year is about, having a conversation, reintroducing ourselves, finding out how our club members are really thinking and feeling. Depression is real, anxiety is real, isolation is real. And our membership has suffered greatly, but we've got to think of ways to grow and reconnect. We have to find our rotary happy again. We have to find our rotary love. I love rotary. I have rotary enthusiasm. It, it's inside me. It's inside my heart. I want you to feel that too. So often when a district governor visits, there's tear-jerking stories. Maybe you all remember um, Jim Schrader from Finley. He seemed to be able to cry on a dime, and I love him dearly. But, I, you know, and I've witnessed it. My husband and Gary and I have traveled the world, and we've seen atrocities in other countries through hardship because of the lack of resources, the lack of education, and it's tough to pull oneself up out of poverty and oppression when you don't have the resources you need. But it's unique that Rotary has the ability to help with that. So we can think about that. How can I help with that? And this year, we have been challenged by our international president to be a change maker. Every time you pick up your Rotary magazine and your club member had referenced, the new Rotary magazine is up, you open that page, the first thing Shaker says, dear change makers. So he's addressing you as a change. So I want to focus, focus on change. And what does that change mean? That change means something different to every one of us. But one thing I know for sure is the words that I speak and the ones that I choose to hear greatly influence the direction I go. I have faith, I have love, I have hope, I have peace. And when I tie all those things together, for me, that equals justice. And because of that, I can move beyond a difficult time with kindness toward one another, with fairness toward one another, to help create a better world where peace and understanding tame the savageness and make our world more gentle. And when you think of Rotary, Rotary has a code of conduct. It's usually now on maybe the back three pages of your magazine. And, and that gives us a footprint of how we are to be conducting ourselves as Rotarians remembering what the object of Rotary is, and remembering that the four-way test helps each and every one of us in our decision-making. 
And it's so important this year to say, I can have a change of heart. How I felt last week, last month, last year, five years ago, is not how I'm feeling today. And that's part of change, having that change of heart. In Rotary, we talk about a three-legged stool. And again, I'm gonna pull up a stool and start to have that conversation. We talk about public image, that's marketing, everything we do. We talk about membership. Membership is critical to our existence. And our international president, Shaker Mesa says, he wants 1.3 million Rotarians, everyone to bring one. I said, that's really a lofty number. But when I thought about it a little more, it's been 1.2 million for the 33 years I've been a Rotarian, and we can't seem to move the needle. Why is that? Because we're set in our ways, we don't change the club meeting time, we don't want to change up the meeting, let's add a breakfast meeting and take a lunch meeting out, let's take a meeting off, let's develop new types of clubs where if Hicksville's the strong oak tree in town, that you develop a branch. And that little new branch that just grew has eight little baby leaves. And those eight little baby leaves is considered a satellite club, a satellite club of Hicksville, where out of those eight leaves, there's one person that's the chairperson that reports back to the club president of what they're focusing on. That little branch maybe meets just twice a month at a different location, and then we have one signature project. They're a part of you, they're part of Rotary, but they're Rotary a different way. And the foundation. Without the Rotary Foundation, we don't exist either. Whether you're, you're going to write a grant and ask for money back to help a project that you have interest in in your, in your community or globally, or whether you're giving to the foundation knowing by giving those foundation dollars, we're helping people all over the world. Those three things, membership, foundation, and public image is the one stool that we're sitting on. Now I'm gonna ask you to bring up another stool. And the next stool you're bringing up, again, somebody else is gonna sit on that, so here comes the other, we're gonna have a conversation. These are some of the things that Shaker Mesa, our international president, is concerned with this year. As you know, in Rotary, we have the seven areas of focus. We talk about peace, we talk about disease prevention, we talk about water and sanitation, we talk about children and mother's health, we talk about education, we talk about our local economy. He added the environment. It's official. The environment is the seventh area of focus. What does that mean locally to you? What does that mean globally? So Shaker said the environment is top priority this year and moving forward. Shaker also said empowering girls is important. The girls of the world are waiting for us. That means something different to each and every one of us. He also said diversity, equity, and inclusiveness. That means something different. And when you turn to page two of your magazine, what do you see? This was in last month, this is in this month. So diversity, equity, inclusiveness. If someone has a disability, are they welcome in your club meeting? Does everyone's voice matter? Being inclusive means everyone's voice matters, every voice deserves to be heard, and we can respectfully disagree with one another, and then I ask that we always look back to the object of Rotary, the conduct of a Rotarian, and the four-way test. That's, that's the core of our existence. So, empowering girls, diversity, equity, inclusiveness, and the environment. So I decided when he said environment, and I'm thinking foundation too, I decided a little red car that's fast, that's red. So this is the Mustang Mach-E. When the Ford Motor Company decided to put the Mustang label on an electric vehicle, they had my attention. Most people know that Lee Iacocca was the man behind the Ford Mustang. And we know the Mustang GT, we know the Mustang Shelby, and then now we're talking about a Mustang Mach-E that's electric. This baby is red, it's fast, it has torque, it has gray leather interior for your Buckeye fans, and we're gonna raffle this thing off at the district conference. This is a $57,000 vehicle. If everybody just buys one ticket or sells one ticket, I will achieve my goal for the Rotary International Foundation of $100,000. The club that sells the most tickets per capita gets $2,500 of a project of their choice, but I've got to hit that $100,000 marker. But I'll tell you what, only 1,800 sales. I'm capping the sales at 1,800, of course, within the United States. So I'm hoping you'll get behind this, sell one ticket or buy one ticket, and again, the proceeds go to the Rotary International Foundation, which we get a portion back 
to do grants at a later date, or the money goes to help people all over the world. So I'm checking off the boxes. That takes care of foundation, and that takes care of the environment. So diversity, equity, inclusiveness, I decided to have a different type of a peace conference. We had over 200 reservations last Saturday at the Lorraine County Community College. We had exemplary, world-renowned speakers, and I think it gave a footprint to start to talk about some things differently. So I really believe that was achieved. I would like to see some of our clubs be peace, peace clubs. And, and a club that wants to have a peace park or a meditative spot or a peace pulse or they're developing peace initiatives. I would like to see us develop something a little bit more consistent within the district with peace. So having an environment that's healthy for all of us, an environment where it's non-harassing, non-bullying, where everyone is welcome, is so important in Rotary as we grow. Now think about this. Pre-COVID, were people wanting to join the club? Were people really building up membership? We have been a decline in membership for about the past four or five years. And I think because Shaker Mecca said, this is a change maker year, what that means to me is he gave me a hall pass. He gave me a hall pass this year to do things differently, to do something I've never done before, to try something different. So documenting the change is so important. In the Hicksville Rotary Club in the year 21-22, these are the three things that we change. So here comes that third school. That's Shannon's school. What are the three things that your sitting club president is passionate about that wants to change? I ask for you to get behind Shannon. So you have Shannon School, you have Shaker School, you have the traditional Rotary School. So all three of us are sitting on a stool and we're reintroducing ourselves, we're reintroducing our concepts, and we're trying to get our Rotary world back up and running a new way this year. So every year fun things happen and we missed the district conference last year with Keith Hodkinson, we missed the district conference the year before with Carolyn Houston, but I believe wholeheartedly that we will be this year in May at our district conference. And I had asked the club president early on when I was meeting with them monthly via Zoom because I was not permitted to go out and visit them prior to this July. Uh, we were only meeting Zoom. I gave them five choices. One was a rotary crew and only two people out of 63. And we have 63 clubs and 3,022 members where we used to have 68 clubs and 5,000 members back in the day. Um, we only had two people that wanted to do that rotary cruise, to go with me to the Bahamas, get off the boat, go to a project, get back on the boat and sail home. Or to go into Mexico and do a project and get back on the boat and sail home. And you know, Mexico is celebrating their 100th anniversary of, of rotary this year. So maybe someday we'll have a rotary cruise. And uh, Rock Hall was not a top choice, and Ni Niagara on the Lake at Shaw Festival was not a top choice, or Cedar Point was not a top choice. But our top choice was Geneva on the Lake, Wine Country, and Covered Bridges. So I don't want you drinking and driving, so I'm going to shuttle you from this compound to the different vineyards, and you can drink as much wine as you want. We'll have great keynote speakers. <coughs> I'll take you to the Covered Bridges and bring you back. So you can rent a cottage or stay at the main compound, but everything is so very close together. There's bike riding and zip lining and kayaking. Uh, boating, fishing, it's, it's really beautiful. You're right on the water, it's very clean. It's so pretty to drive, to drive up that way, especially mid-May when everything is coming into bloom. So May 13th, 14th, and 15th, District Conference, Geneva on the lake. Uh, and at that time, too, on Saturday night, we will be raffling off this car. So it should be a really great time. And then after that, the next big thing we need to think, talk about is the International Convention. Houston, Texas. So we didn't have Taiwan. We didn't have Hawaii because of COVID, but we will be in Houston and it will be an awesome, a wonderful time. I plan to have a, a, house, a booth in the House of Friendship where I can feature our Mesa so people in the whole wide world can learn what Mesa is about. And then any of our local clubs, the projects that they're proud of, I would like to showcase within my little booth of House of Friendship. Uh, keynote speakers are wonderful. I don't know how many in this room have attended an international convention, but very briefly, I'll share with you um, the one in Atlanta. I mean, when you pay the fee for the international convention, you get these top-notch speakers. We had John Cena as Master of Ceremonies. We had Ashton Kutcher as one of the speakers. We had Jack Nicholas, world-renowned golfer. And then, of course, we had the Bill Gates, who matches our money for polio, Two to one, and yes, we are more than this close to getting that polio situation eradicated. So 
So I hope you want to come on board and get back to the rotary that we, we know and love and being, being re-engaged again. Um, every month you're getting a newsletter from me, and for instance, the September newsletter, we had reintroduced all of our youth programs because we're back in our schools. So there was something about Strive, there was something about youth exchange. We're going to try real hard to get our programs back up and running again. Of course, anything with international travel has to have the blessing of um, the, the president, the president-elect, and, and the directors. So I need someone to share the essay portion of the four-way competition at one of those youth programs. I would like for us to travel to Switzerland and do an adult exchange, 25 to 40 year olds. I need someone to say, hey, I'll lead the organization of that. Everything, it takes a lot of people to run the district. We're all invited to work at the district. So if, if you have something that you would like to help with or you have an idea, please reach out and let me, let me know. This again is the change maker year. This is the hall pass year to do things differently. And I hope very much that you get behind your president that you're able to stay healthy in Hicksville and, and enjoy your club and enjoy your community. Thank you very much for your attention. At this time, I'll take questions. Thank you. Mary in Hicksville, we have about eight minutes left of our Zoom timing for questions. There was a question about when the youth exchange will be reintroduced. Mary? So there was a question about the youth exchange being reintroduced. Um, I attended the um, Ohio Erie Youth Exchange Multi-District meeting, which we're part of, along with my husband and our outbound chair, Melanie Satterfield. And right now, we're looking for clubs that are willing to put in their budget for youth exchange, getting uh, a school district and the club to sign on the dotted line that will, they will host inbound. If we're permitted for Rotary International to have it in August of 2022, uh, right now, there are only three students that have started a preliminary application, which they need to complete the full application to be interviewed in December or January. If we are able to travel in August of 2022, it will be different. You will not be, I'm not sure that you'll have the Eastern trip, the Western trip, the Euro trip, but we're trying real hard to get back on point. Um, but again, Jennifer Jones, our incoming president and that board will be deciding if, if we're able to travel. As far as right now, we are grounded with youth travel through June of 2022. Um, and that was Shaker Mehta and his board, in his board's decision. So it's just one, one step at a time, just, just one. Same thing with the STRIVE program, the students taking renewed interest in, in the value of education. Um, Jim Heave is our, our chairman this year, and his information is in the directory that your secretary received and your sitting club president. We can do that program even just with one semester. If you're able to get it back into school for one semester to reintroduce the program, we're still gonna go ahead with, with all of the scholarship opportunities. So it's just one step at a time. Right now we are still grounded, and there hasn't been the word to go for August, but we're told to do planning, but emphasize that it's a big if if we are permitted. You still have to plan in case you are able to go. Okay, I think that um, answers the one question that we had. I, I believe we can wrap up. Um, anything else? Okay. I think we're good. Thank you, Mary. Sorry. Sorry.